Something very big is about to happen, and we better be paying attention to it. And there are like five huge news developments that we need to cover today, which have massive implications for Western powers. And I'm going to show you something also that's very, very strange that NATO just did, which no mainstream media are covering right now, and it's very concerning. But first, let's start with something that's coming to the Western Hemisphere. On Friday, Russian President Putin started sending a massive armada of battleships headed right for Cuba, right off of Florida's coast. Several Russian warships are on their way to Cuba this morning. That happened back in the 1960s, the Cuban Missile Crisis. It was just a little thing comes days after a warning from Vladimir Putin that Russia could provide weapons to actors that would then attack Western targets over those countries' support of Ukraine. Early this coming week, if you're standing in Key West, Florida, using your binoculars, you will likely see something that looks like this. Yes, Russian warships performing massive military training exercises, docking in Havana Harbor, right in our backyard. How the hell did this happen? Incompetence. Failure on the part of America's leadership is how it happened, that we are sitting now on the brink of another Cuban missile crisis. Yeah, nuclear-powered Russian submarines, destroyers with cruise missiles that can easily attack American cities, and warships that make our Navy ships seem old just by modern standards. Just look at this map. This is Havana, where the Russian fleet will be docking. And the country would look like during war with Russia. Its 67-page roadmap for life during World War III would see young people conscripted, weather forecasts axed, and subway stations turned into bomb shelters as the country shores up its eastern border with NATO. The Framework Directive for Overall Defense lays out exactly how ordinary men and women would be affected by the war. National conscription would return and citizens could be drafted at any time. Those 18 or older could be forced to stay in certain jobs that provide essential services. And if need be, food would be rationed to one hot meal per day. The government could even stockpile wheat, rye and oats in secret spots. But in order to stop an epidemic, the government insists bin collection would continue even during war. Underground garages and certain cellars would even be turned into temporary bunkers. And extreme cases would see weather forecasts and reports banned completely. Presumably, it would help Putin's troops to plan an attack. Companies across the country would focus on making defense products, and hospitals would gear up to handle a large number of casualties. The plan was revealed as fears of an all-out war between NATO and Russia creep higher and higher by the week. Only days ago, Putin vowed to send his terrifying set of long-range missiles to allies across Europe after learning of the West's renewed support for Ukraine. His war against Kiev has now raged on for more than two years. Поставки оружия в зону конфликта <coughs> это всегда плохо. Тем более, если, если это связано с тем, что те, кто поставляют, они не только поставляют оружие, а управляют этим оружием. И это очень серьезный и очень опасный шаг. Когда на украинской земле появились первые немецкие танки, немецкого производства. Это уже произвело такой морально-этический шок в России, потому что отношение к Федеративной Республике в российском обществе всегда было очень хорошим. Но очень хорошим. Теперь, когда говорят, что сейчас еще появятся какие-то ракеты, которые будут наносить удары по объектам на территории России, это, конечно, окончательно разрушает российские и германские отношения. Мы понимаем, что, как говорил один из известных немецких политических деятелей, после Второй мировой войны Федеративная Республика Германия никогда не была в полном смысле этого слова суверенным государством. Zugleich fürchten viele Bürgerinnen und Bürger, dass der Krieg weiter eskalieren könnte, dass Sicherheit und Frieden auch bei uns in Gefahr geraten. Sich Sorgen zu machen und den Frieden, daran ist nichts Naives oder Anrüchiges, wie es manchmal dargestellt wird. Sorgen der Bürgerinnen und Bürger sind etwas, was wir respektieren und ernst nehmen sollten. Ich jedenfalls tue das. 
Als Bundeskanzler trage ich die Verantwortung dafür, dass kein Kind, das heute in Deutschland geboren wird, jemals Krieg in unserem Land erleben muss. Das hat für mich absolute Priorität. Wir haben uns mit unseren Verbündeten eng abgestimmt, wie wir darauf reagieren, so wie wir das immer machen. Und wir haben gemeinsam noch einmal bekräftigt, die Ukraine hat das völkerrechtlich verbriefte Recht, sich gegen Angriffe auf ihr Territorium, auf ihre Städte und ihre Bürgerinnen und Bürger zu wehren. Das gilt auch für Angriffe wie im Raum Kharkiv, die Russland aus Stellung im direkt angrenzenden russischen Grenzgebiet durchführt. Um sich gegen solche Angriffe zu verteidigen, kann die Ukraine auch die von uns und unseren Verbündeten gelieferten Waffen einsetzen, immer in Übereinstimmung mit internationalen rechtlichen Verpflichtungen. Und zugleich sage ich ganz klar, es ist richtig, dass wir uns vor solchen Entscheidungen, vor solchen weitreichenden Entscheidungen wieder und wieder und wieder mit unseren Partnern und Verbündeten eng abstimmen. building a cohesive city with uh, opportunities for local living. Population is rapidly growing and we have to be able to accommodate for that. Right now the plans we have are kind of Frankenstein together over decades. The 50 new district plans and corresponding bylaws will replace 54 existing planning documents dating back to the 1980s. Our city is growing. And the more we can accommodate within existing infrastructure and existing neighborhoods, better it is for the taxpayers as well. Administration says the goal is to accommodate 600,000 new residents in redeveloped areas with 50% of all new home units added through infill. The plan also calls for half of all future travel to be done by transit and for residents to access all their daily needs within 15 minutes. Not everyone supports the plan. My understanding is that this means I will need to stay within my district to meet all my needs so that the city can meet its climate plan objectives. I don't think Edmonton, Edmontonians can afford to be part of a renovation experiment of this size so quickly. I think unfortunately a lot of the district plan in, in particular have been derailed by 15 minute cities, uh, conspiracy theories, uh, you know, world economic forums, etc. Um, at the end of the day, this is about land use. They have literally delayed their agenda because I think it's so important to them. They've been very careful about the timing and they've, oh, let's wait a little longer. Let's wait a little longer. Let's have this crisis first. Oh, let's have COVID first, you know, soften them up. But they've delayed because the technology was really ready um, around 2015 to roll out. Mm -hmm. And what, what people don't mention is what do these CBDCs actually look like, you know? Um, mm -hmm. At the moment, there's a bit of talk about this being phone-based apps. And yes, that is the initial phase. But what was already ready around 2015 is the ultimate goal, what they really want. Apparently, I was told by a central banker, is, you know, CBDC looks like a small grain of rice that they want to put under your skin, which is, in my view, a violation of human dignity. And they realize there is a hurdle. So to get people to, get people to accept this, there will be, you know, why, why suddenly all the billionaires saying, let's have universal basic income? Because the story is going to be, oh, now we've created, you've created this vast unemployment and, and uh, disruption and crises. Well, we need universal basic income. You will get uh, 2,000 euros into your account every month. But of course, to run this efficiently, we need to use the latest technology. So, you know, you, you need the <laughs> CBDC uh, yeah. chip implant. But how many people will say, okay, fine, 2,000 pounds, uh, 2,000 euros, you know. Um. A, surprising, <laughs> a, a surprising proportion.
how the bullets feel? Okay. We don't have fire there. Huh? We don't have fire. It's when do watermelon feel like that? Yeah. Allah, 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 Allah,